Hello and welcome to this beginner's tutorial for Elden Ring. If, like me, you've never played through any of these games before and you want to try it out, I'm going to help you get through the first couple of steps of this game without rage quitting and begging Steam for a refund like I did. But I eventually came back, I rebought it, redownloaded it. I spent a good amount of time figuring out how to do things and I'm gonna show you what I did to help uh, make my experience a little bit better. So the first thing that you're gonna want to do is adjust your settings. So I am on a PC. If you're on a console, some of these uh, key bindings and whatnot you can ignore because for the most part yours are already set. But for me on the PC, uh, I'll walk through through some of those some of these settings real quick. The first helpful thing for me is to set my auto lock and auto target off because this is just going to auto lock on enemies and it's going to move your camera all over the place. It's kind of annoying, it's not very intuitive in my opinion. And then I turn manual attack aiming on, which just lets you manually aim, um, but it will also auto aim for you when you manually lock onto a target. So this is the settings that I like. Uh, controller vibration doesn't matter because I'm using a keyboard and mouse. All right, for my camera, the main thing I wanted to switch here is change the camera speed to zero. Otherwise, the camera's just zooming around and it makes you kind of sick to watch. So zero, I like, uh, but you can play with the settings. Just adjust it up if you think it's too slow, though I doubt you will. Uh, sound, I uh, don't think I changed anything here. You can change uh, volume and things like that if you want to. I didn't change anything here. You can ignore that. Uh, mouse sensitivity, I like it at 4, maybe 5, I've been playing with those too, that's about right for me, but you can adjust it to your liking. And then set your resolution to whatever your computer can handle. Um, I just left mine on the automatic uh, recommend, recommended settings and it's been working fine for me. Alright, let's talk key bindings real quick, because in my opinion the key bindings that it gives you uh, as default are kind of strange and they don't really work too well for this game uh, so let's talk about those real quick uh, right so forward backward left right it's just WASD like normal so that one's fine for back step or roll which is also your sprint if you hold it I use shift because that's common in other games uh, jump I made space crouch I switched to C because C is pretty typical these are all unbound, and then the lock on target, uh, this is the default and I left it as that, so that's just pressing down on the scroll wheel. And then the next one you're going to want to change is switching your armaments. So you have a main hand, which calls right hand, a left hand, which is your off hand, and then also some kind of sorcery, which you can use, and then items. And this is how I did it, it just makes the most sense to me to adjust my main hand with one, my offhand with two, my sorcery with three, and my item with four. And so when you press these, it'll cycle through your equipped armaments in each of these slots. All right, so attack is simply left mouse button. Uh, attack or guard, which is your offhand, is right mouse button. So main hand, left click, offhand, right click. And then I set my strong attack to R and my skill to Q. And so what that means is you can have a stronger attack than just a normal attack, and I put that one as R, so that's R, it's on the right side, so it's my main hand again, uh, and then skill is on the left side, and that one just sort of made the most sense to me and felt comfortable for me. Use item, I used F, which is pretty common, and then event action starts as E, and I left it at default, because that's that one's pretty typical. Uh, again, you can adjust these to whatever makes sense for you, but that's just kind of what I liked. One other setting that's going to be really important is if you're on PC and you're using keyboard and mouse, change this device for on-screen prompts. It starts as gamepad, which gives you, you know, B for back, but it, that's not how it works with the uh, with the keyboard. So change it to keyboard and mouse, and then it's obvious uh, with all the menus how you navigate everything. All right, so now that we got that all set up, let's talk about making a character. After you hit new game, you're given 
think it's 10 choices. And it's not super obvious what all these are, so you'll notice down here we can hit F to show status, and that will tell you the starting equipment down here, and also the stat allocation for each one of these. Uh, but if, like me, you don't know what any of this stuff means, you can press G for help. And I'm going to hit explanation. And whatever you hover over, it's going to give you an explanation for what those mean. So level's pretty self-explanatory. Vigor is your health. Uh, mine is your FP, focus points. Uh, in other games, it's mana. It's the blue bar that you need to you know, cast spells and also use skills. Endurance is your stamina, so uh, sprinting, dodging, blocking, things like that. Uh, strength is wielding heavy armaments. Typically, this is your offhand or like a shield. Um, and then dexterity is your main hand, which is like, you know, uh, if you're wielding swords, and so it scales damage on those. Uh, so, strength, generally offhand, blocking. Um, and dexterity is more like main hand uh, attacks. Intelligence, this is for sorcery, a very specific type of magic casting which is uh, used, which is, which is cast with a staff. So there's two main types of magic in this game. One is intelligence based which is cast with a staff and then faith based which is cast uh, with a different item and uh, they're just a different type of spell so depending on which type of magic you want to do you may or may not want to invest in one of these two and then arcane also is another stat it's discovery it seems to have an impact on uh, critical hits and then there's also some specific sorceries and incantations but it's a little bit more advanced um, than what we're going to talk about in this video. So if you are a first timer like I was and you want to know which are the easiest classes to at least get started with the two I would recommend because I spent like eight hours yesterday trying out the beginning section with all of these the easiest ones I would say is probably Vagabond number one and number two I would say Confessor and the reason I say that is the Vagabond has quite a bit of health they start with a lot of health and they have a good shield and uh, two different types of weapons that you can use for different kinds of enemies the reason I like Confessor is because of a lot of those uh, reasons I just pointed out. Though their vigor is lower, they do have this item right here which allows them to cast um, spells and one of the spells that they start with is a heal so they can heal themselves. Uh, let's see, Samurai is also a solid pick and then if you really want to do magic the Astrologer is probably your best start. Uh, they're lower on health but they, they are pretty powerful uh, to start with so, so they're a decent pick too. Um, for this, let's just start with the, actually we're going to start with the Confessor so we can see two different playstyles. So we'll just make a player here and you can change all sorts of things about their appearance. I'll just leave them as is because I'm going to delete this after we go through the tutorial. Um, and then the other thing you might be wondering is what keepsake to pick. Uh, you know, if you're new, Golden Seed's pretty good, so I'll just pick that. Um, some of the other ones are self-explanatory, some of them are a little bit confusing. But I'll just pick Golden Seed. There are some cinematics here, which I will skip. I will do my best to avoid as many spoilers as possible, though there, there may be a couple here and there. All right, the first thing that you might run into is these glowing tablets on the ground, and we can interact with them, and it's some message that another player has left, and you can appraise these. You can give them an appraisal, good or poor, and when you give them a good appraisal, wherever that player is in the world, it will give them a heal. So if, if someone leaves a message and you find it useful, you can appraise them. I usually just ignore them, because a lot of them are just junk. Um, I haven't got to a place in the game where I need them yet. Alright, so I'll go over to this guy, grab what I need. That. The 
this is the first area of the tutorial. Uh, you might want to run around, get used to the controls a little bit, the camera, how you move, jumping, things like that. There's some things you can slash. Um, but when you're ready to move on, we'll just follow this path down. You also see these blood stains on the ground, and that's where other players have died recently. And so if you interact with them, you can actually see, there he is in red, you can see what that player is doing, you can see how they die. And so it looks like he just ran off the edge. So we'll go across this bridge, and in an effort to avoid spoilers, we'll cut the video here, but suffice to say, something bad is probably going to happen. I'll let you figure it out for yourself. Alright, we're back. After some brief cinematics, it tells us we got these new flasks. So let's talk about flasks real quick. Uh, if you notice, our heads-up display is gone. You can press your interact key to bring it back up. And remember early how we bound keys 1 through 4? So if you're on a console, let's use the D-pad. 1 is my main hand, so you can see I'm cycling what's in that spot. You can have a couple different things equipped in each slot. And so I'm just switching. And then the top one is your is your sorcery or your incantation. It's your magic, basically. So I can choose between those. Uh, if you have a staff, you need the staff equipped and then you use the staff to cast what's in this uh, in this slot because I am a confessor I do not have a staff I actually don't even know what this is called let's find out so we can hit escape to access our menu let's go to equipment it's gonna give you some explanation that's a finger seal there that's what it's called so this finger seal is used for casting uh, these incantations. So right now up there I changed it to heal and so if I right click because that's the button I use for my offhand I can cast a heal. And you can see in the top left it took away some of my FP or magic mana. Uh, it's FP in this game. And then the other one I can cast is Assassin's Approach so I'll right click again and it gives me this little glowing feet which makes me run quietly so you can't hear me running, so you could sneak up on people better. So let's switch it back to a shield, and if I hold, right click, I can block, and left click is attack, so that's the basics. Alright, so after you find yourself here, the mistake I made was going up to that door because there's uh, nothing really forcing you to go down here. I didn't think that it was a good idea, but turns out it is if you're a noob like I am because that's where most of the tutorial happens. So this guy will give us a couple of you know, words of wisdom. I drop down here, and this is where the tutorial really starts. So it's going to give us some instruction, and we're met with this first site of grace. And a site of grace is where you can rest, it's where you can heal, replenish your flasks, you can fast travel to them. Um, you can also level up with these, but we're not quite there in the game yet. So for now, let's just walk up to it and we'll interact with it. And that activates it. Uh, so we've met our first target right here. I've bound my middle scroll wheel to lock on. So you can see that white dot shows me who I'm locked on to and so I'll keep my focus on him and any attacks or movements I make are in relationship to him and then if I click it again I can remove it and I can go on my way all right so let's just do a simple attack left click and because I was behind him I did a critical attack like that so here's the next one let's try blocking So I can block it, and you can see in the top left the green bar goes down when I block an attack because attacks use some of your stamina. And if the attack is big enough, it can actually break your stance and remove your stamina, which leads you open. Because this guy's weak, that's not really a big deal. So I can block his attack, and then I can hit him. 
And because I had target already on, it's automatically focused on my next target. Alright, so we've already tried a normal attack, so let's try... Let's try a power attack, which I bound to R. So if I press and hold that, I can charge it up for a stronger attack. Alright, let's try dodging since that's what it recommended. So mine is shift. So if I just press it, it'll make me jump backwards. Or if I'm pressing any direction, it'll make me roll in that direction. So I could also roll toward him. Or I can roll backwards. And it takes some practice. You have to time your rolls with their attacks um, because there's just a short period where you're invincible to attacks. And different enemies attack differently, so you kind of have to memorize them. And these guys are good to practice on because they're pretty slow compared to enemies later in the game. Alright, so now we meet this guy up here, and unless you have a spell or some kind of arrow, we can't really attack him, so we'll just run by for now. But that's a good place to see how projectiles move and how you would dodge them. Alright, so this enemy is a little bit different. He's got a shield, so he's going to block our attacks. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. One, I could just wait for him to attack and lower his guard, but instead I'm going to dual wield my sword. So I do that by holding my interact key, which is E, and then clicking on the armament. I want to clip with two hands. If it was a shield, I would right click so you can see I'm dual wielding the shield. Um, or I can use it can do a wield my sword by holding E and left clicking. Alright, so I'm going to do a power attack to stagger him. Like that. And once you break his stance, he's open to hit. And then if I want to switch back to my shield, I can just switch my shield back on. And there it is. Alright, so now... Here's that guy that we were dodging earlier, so let's just... Oh, see, I'm a noob. So we can dodge his attack. And then we get up to him. So now he's blocking, so we'll use a power attack. Alright. So now let's try out a skill. So your skills are shown on the left side with that little gold sword and its parry and it's different depending on the weapon. Different weapons have different skills. And if I dual wield the sword versus uh, just wielding with one hand, it changes again. So I'm now holding Q and the skill is square off. So what it's doing is it's making, putting me in a ready stance to attack. So let's switch back to our shield so that it's on parry. And let's see what happens if I hit Q. So it hits, tries to hit him with the, with the shield. I don't really understand parry because it doesn't actually hit them. I think you have to time it correctly like that. Oh, yeah. See, I just learned how to do it. So if you time it correctly with their attack, it staggers them so that you can attack them. Um, but it's a little bit challenging to time correctly. All right, you'll notice that my health and mana are a little bit low. So I have two options. I could heal myself but I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how flasks work. So you can see the flask there at the bottom, and crimson is health, and cerulean, the blue one, is your mana or your FP. So let's use our bound key, which in my case is F, to drink which one is equipped. And then I'll, we can cast a heal here as well, to replenish some health and use some FP. And then I'm running low on FP, so let's drink our flask of cerulean and replenish our mana. And so we are now out of the cerulean tears, and and we have 
a few more of the crimson. All right, so it prompted us to sneak up behind this guy. Let's go ahead and crouch, and we'll just walk up behind him, and then just a regular left click, and that does critical damage when you sneak up on someone. See, I meant to have my shield equipped, and it was not equipped. Alright, let's talk about stance breaking and power moves. So, I already showed you how to do a power move with R, but we can also sprint up to the enemy and do a charge attack with R, like that. And you'll notice it's different from a regular attack, which is that one, versus a power attack. We can also do jumping attacks. So if you jump and attack, uh, you can attack enemies if they might be uh, above you. Like sometimes there's flying enemies. And then also you can use a power attack while in the air to strike downward for ground foes. And you can see how he just sort of hit the ground like that because I broke his stance, and that means that they're open for another attack, and sometimes if you time it right, you can get a critical hit on them. Alright, now we're going to come up to this stake right here. This is a stake of America. And when you're in this area, it usually tells you that a challenge is coming up, and behind these mist barriers, there's usually a boss. So if you're ready for the boss, you can go in there. If not, Try this. Try hitting the G key, which is map. And you have to use WASD to navigate. And you can actually travel back to the cave of this first uh, site of grace that you activated. And so you can fast travel. And one of the things that happens when you do that is it resets all the uh, enemies. Not bosses, but regular enemies. And so you'll see up here the enemies are back. So if you feel like you need more practice, you can do it again. Uh, just travel back and, and keep trying different things. So one other thing that I didn't show you how to do was counterattacking. So you see that there's a brief period that he's staggered after he attacks me. So when that happens, right after you block, if you press your power attack, which in my case is R, get a counterattack like that. So that's a good thing to practice because uh, it's useful against bosses when you're able to block their attacks. And you'll notice that my flasks were replenished since I visited a site of grace. Alright, let's try and stagger this guy with a running attack. Alright, that didn't work. Let's try again. Let's do a sprinting. There we go. Let's see if he'll attack me again. Alright. So let's just say we're pretty comfortable with the basics. And you'll notice as I'm sprinting my stamina bar is depleting. And it replenishes pretty quickly. Alright, so now that we're pretty comfortable and we want to fight a more difficult enemy, let's go through here. So this is a good place to practice all the different stuff you learned. Or just fail miserably a couple times like I do. Like I said, I'm not very good. Alright, 
So now, if you'll notice, we're back where we started, right down there. So that's the tutorial area. All right, so this is the first thing that we can pillage out here. So let's pillage it, and it gives you the strength thing, which took me a while. This is actually just a post, so it's not an item or skill or anything. All right, so let's uh, pause the footage for a minute and let you explore through here on your own. And we'll pick it up when we get out. All right, when we get out to Limgrave, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is activate this side of Grace. All right, so now let's talk about guidance. So they tell you about it here, and there's, see this shimmering light? It's sort of pointing you in the direction it wants you to go. And so it's kind of pointing that direction. So that's the direction we're going to go. And you can also check on your map, like it suggested, and you see this, it's giving you the direction it wants you to go in order to follow some part of the story. Um, I definitely recommend following it for the first couple of things, because for the first couple of stops, that way you get you know, this, the starting items, and it, you'll get to a point where you can level up. So uh, after that, you know, it is an open world, so you can do it in any order you want. But I do recommend getting at least to the part where you can level up. All right, so here's this big guy. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You can engage him if you want. All right, we're back. So we made it to this old cathedral-looking place, and you can see the that shimmering grace there is kind of pointing me in this direction and so we're now at the church of Ella where there's another side of grace so we'll touch this one and over here we have a merchant which you can talk to you can buy things from him I recommend buying a crafting kit so you can craft things and you can play around with that uh, but I'm not going to cover it in this video because I'm just covering sort of the basics of how to get through the beginning and combat so that you don't have uh, such a frustrating time in the early stages of the game. Alright, so if we check out our map, we can see it's sort of pointing this way again, so I'm going to stick to the road and follow it that way to see where it leads me. Uh, along the road, there's some more enemies where you can practice some more. So let's charge that guy. There's, uh, there's some guys over on the right and left. I'll just skip them for now. I am running low on health, so drink a glass real quick. Sneak up on this guy. Alright, so here's another stake of America. You know you're in one of these areas because up there on the top left below my stamina bar you can see the icon for the stake. And this is a really good area to practice. So there's uh, different opportunities to fight enemies with uh, different weapons. Some have shields, some don't. And then also there's some good areas to sneak and try sneaking. There's a few different kinds of enemies, including there's some dogs over here that you can fight. Um, there may or may not be some useful items for you to discover in these ruins. Again, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You can give it a look yourself. Uh, but ultimately, where we're trying to get is to another side of Grace. There's one right over here. Let's go ahead and rest here. So when you rest at a side of grace, it restores your health, your mana, your flasks, and it also lets you do a few things which I'll cover. And I'll let you watch the cinematic on your own so as to not spoil it for you. Alright, so this is what it looks like when you're at a side of grace. You can pass time, so if you, right now it's nighttime, if I want it to be daytime because generally fighting is easier in the day because there's fewer enemies. Uh, you, this is also where you're going to level up. 
So we haven't mentioned it yet, but the main source of currency in this game for buying items and also for leveling up are runes. And you collect these a couple of different ways, but one of the main ways is killing enemies. And so it's not super obvious, but when an enemy dies, some like gold pixie dust or something flies over to you, and those are the runes. So here we see our attribute points, and we can level them up. And so as I level it up, it tells you how many I have and how many I need to do that level up. And then also, when I level up my vigor, what's it doing? So it's raising my health from 414 to 434. Um, and you can try it out with different things to, just to see what each of them adjusts. And you can see what the output is. And let's just say I want one more vigor, so let's hit confirm. And then also if you need additional help, you can try help down here explanation and then as you hover over things it will explain them to you so that's also useful if you're not sure what something means all right and then flasks so remember that uh, artifact what was it called that I chose at the beginning and I chose golden seed so what a golden seed does is it lets you add a charge to your flask so it increases the number that you can carry so I'll just hit yes to increase. And then also you, there's another item that you acquire later in the game, which I still haven't got, but it's called a sacred tier, and it increases the amount replenished by your flasks. And then lastly, you can allocate how your flasks are, well, allocated. And so let's say you never use magic, your character that doesn't use any ma uh, magic or very little FP. Uh, you can switch it all to, to health, or maybe, you know, if you're a sorcerer, you want to have mostly magic, you can switch the other way. Uh, I'll just leave it like this for now. Uh, sort chest lets you sort of manage the way uh, that your items are stored. You can, you know, put them away so that you're not carrying them all. Uh, you do have a certain amount that you can carry. And so if you're overburdened, you can move them into your chest. And then lastly is spells. So you'll gain uh, more spells as you play. And you can only have so many equipped or memorized at once. And so you'll just want to make sure that the ones you want to take with you are equipped up here. Right now I only know two, so I can't switch them. Alright. And the last thing that I want to cover is... The last item that we just got from that cinematic was this, the Spectral Steed Whistle. So this is what you'll use to summon your mount, which is very helpful. And once you get it, I recommend you try out um, mounted combat and learn how that works, because that'll be the, the last main kind of combat that you need to learn. So let's bring up our menu by hitting escape. It's also worth noting that the game doesn't pause while we're in these menus, so don't try and pause when you're around enemies or else they'll kill you. So over here we have pouch, and these are sort of quick access. We have quick access to these. So I'm just going to assign a spectral steed whistle to this position, because I know that this is position 4 on the keyboard. And so what I do to access these quick access uh, items in my pouch is by holding E and pressing the corresponding button. So I'm holding E and you see it popped up in the bottom left there. So if I tap 4, I get my mount. And the mount is useful for all sorts of things. So you can sprint, you can jump, you can do double jumps, uh, and then you can also leave your mount by pressing the crouch key. So let's get it back. And I can swing on the right side with uh, left click, and swing on the other side with right click, and then my power attack, uh, charge it up, and then attack. So let's try it out. There is one more advanced enemy in this area that's more good practice. So 
So you can take damage while mounted. Your mount can also take damage. You can be dismounted. So if you're hit a couple times on your mount, sometimes it's, you, it's a good idea to uh, dismount or like that. It can dismount you and it leaves you quite vulnerable, like you can see. So I'm going to try and roll away here before I die. Let's drink a flask. Fighting multiple enemies at once can be challenging. shield. So he just staggered me and left me open. And I died. So this is probably going to happen to you a lot. Don't let it bother you. It's normal. It's expected. It's it's actually, like, you know, planned. Alright. So when you die, you can choose where you revive. Remember that Stake America we passed coming in? but I'm actually closer to that site of Greece, so let's revive there. Alright, so now that I'm back, it'll explain to you that I've lost all my runes. So when you die, they all get dropped where you die, and if you don't pick them up before you die again, they disappear forever. So you can see on the compass up above me, see how they're, they've sort of shown up right there, and that guides you to them. So I'll go up to them, retrieve them, and your runes are displayed there in the bottom right. Again, if you ever want to pull your uh, heads up display back up, just press the interact key, which is E for me. Alright, so let's try this enemy again. Something I think that's helpful to understand is the game, this game really rewards careful planning and skillful combat rather than just running in and demolishing everything. Now maybe you'll get to a place where you're powerful enough to defeat enemies like this relatively easily and you can just run in there, but until you have the skill and equipment to do so, uh, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful and methodical about it, which which is kind of interesting because it's different from a lot of other games where you just kind of run around and demolish everything. I think that's the basics of the game. That should help you get on your way. There is, of course, a lot more to learn about this game. There's so much more depth to it. Um, I'll link some additional resources below that have helped me out. So you can check those out if you find them useful. <laughs>